This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to derive the formula for the vertex of a quadratic function. So in order to derive this formula, there's a couple things that we're going to have to talk about to get behind the uh, process that I'm about to use to do that. Um, so I'm going to talk about the process. And then I'm actually, for the second section of this video, actually go through and show you the mathematics that leads up to the formula. All right, let's get started. So I must begin this video with a word of caution. Uh, first of all, you're always given quadratic equations in a very generic form written like this. This is just your basic quadratic where you've got a constant term, you've got an x term, you've got a squared term. And of course you've got these coefficients in front of the x and x squared term. So I don't know, you know what this looks like very well because it's in a bad form. Now if the quadratic was written into this form, x minus h squared plus k, now this is a nice convenient form to have. If the quadratic is written into this form, it's really easy to see where the vertex is. It's just going to be the opposite of the h, the opposite, I should say, of this, and the, uh, uh, actually just the k term. So really what we're doing is we're taking a simple quadratic and we're moving it h units to the right and k units up. And that's where uh, our maximum is going to occur. So whatever this thing looks like, I know that that maximum is going to be at hk. Okay, the problem with that is that takes a bit of work to be able to get that into this form. And by changing this generic quadratic into this form requires something called knowledge of completing the square. Now we have a video on it and I suggest that you watch it. Otherwise this video is going to be very confusing to you in the next section. Okay, so that was called completing the square. So you need to know that technique. Okay, then um, once you know completing the square, then you have to understand how to translate. And that's a whole other video. So translation is our next uh, video that you should know as a prerequisite for getting into this video. Okay, so in the next section, we're actually going to take an example and I'll walk you through how to change this into this form. And then you'll understand, once you understand translations, where this vertex is. Okay, here we go. All right here we're starting with a generic looking quadratic function. Again I'm going to put this into a nice form uh, and the, to start I have to factor out this a. And I have to factor it out of the x terms. Okay so I need to figure out a times what is b. I know this is strange but it's b over a. Okay so imagine if I did multiply a times b over a. The a's would cancel you'd be left with b. That's where we're starting. That's what we started with. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, I want to complete the square now. And I'm doing it with letters. Quite a challenge. Uh, normally you do these types of problems with values, actual numeric values. So um, here's the challenge. To get this value over here, you take half of the fraction. All right, what's half of the fraction? Half of b over a is b over 2a. And then you square it. So if I square that, I'm going to get b squared all over 4a squared. And that's what's going to go right here. b squared over 4a squared. Okay, I've completed the square. However, um, I actually did now create a term here and I'm changing the value of this expression. I would really have to multiply a times these values to understand what values I really have on this right side. So like that isn't really b over a, it's a times b over a, or in other words bx. So I have to multiply a times this term, and that's really what I have added by putting this value here, and I have to compensate for that. And I have to subtract the same amount so that my, I balance out this equation. So I really add it if I multiply these. I'm going to get b squared over 4a. Okay, so really 
I added b squared over 4a here, so now I have to subtract b squared over 4a uh, there, and now I am, so to say, with a money analogy, I'm revenue neutral, and I now have the same value that I started with. Okay, it's a long explanation just to balance this right side, but okay, so now what is this trinomial as a perfect square? Well, it's going to be, oops, let's make that a little bit neater. Okay, that probably looks neat enough just the way it is. Uh, but it's x plus half of this term. So it's b over 2a. And I just have this mess over here. c minus b squared over 4a. Now remember, now let's keep this in mind. I'm trying to get the polynomial in this form where it's x minus h quantity squared plus k. Because once I get the polynomial in this form, I know, it's real simple. I know that the uh, max value, or I should say in, in a generic sense, that the vertex, we call it v, or the vertex, is going to be at h comma k. Okay, that's how you find the vertex, because when it's in that form, it's all pretty. Everything works out neatly. Well, I kind of had, oop, I forgot to put the square here on the outside. Just caught that error. Okay, but anyway, I do have it in this form. You'll see I have some quantity being squared, and I have some value here on the outside, which is my k. All this is my k value. So, all right, so in other words, where is the vertex of this particular quadratic function? Well, it's going to be always, see how it's the always opposite of this? So I take the opposite. So it's the opposite of b over 2a, and it's all this stuff, right? Whatever's on the outside c minus b squared over 4a. Okay, that is always where the vertex is going to be. So if you're given a quadratic in a very generic sense, it's real simple. Now, first of all, I should tell you, no one remembers this y part. No way, it's way too complicated. But everybody remembers that you take, oh, it's the opposite of b over 2a, which is kind of like a part of the quadratic formula, if you kind of remember the quadratic formula. So if you take the opposite of b and you divide it by 2a, you'll always get the x value of that vertex. So then how do you get the y value? Well, once you get this x value, you plug the x value into the formula that you started with, and it'll give you the y value. That's the easiest way to get this instead of remembering or memorizing this value. Okay. All right, this video is not designed to show you how to use the formula. I'm just showing you right now where this formula comes from because in subsequent uh, videos I've either used it or I will be using this quantity opposite of b over 2a. So I just I hate throwing vi uh, formulas at people without showing them where the formulas come from and that's what this video is about. It's just showing you where that opposite of b over 2a comes from. Okay, all right, so Happy math. Go back to mathguide.com. Check out our uh, text-based lessons, our interactive quizzes, and our instructional videos. Take care.